The sensors from a suspected Chinese spy balloon shot down after crossing the U.S. have been recovered from the Atlantic Ocean, the U.S. military says. Search crews found significant debris from the site, including all of the priority sensor and electronics pieces identified, said U.S. Northern Command. The FBI is examining the items, which the U.S. says were used to spy on sensitive military sites. The U.S. has shot down three more objects since the first one on the 4th of February. Large sections of the structure were also recovered on Monday off the coast of South Carolina, military officials say. U.S. officials said the high-altitude balloon originated in China and was used for surveillance, but China said it was merely a weather-monitoring airship that had blown astray. U.S. forces have shot down four aerial objects over North American skies this month, raising more questions than answers about what's happening high above Earth. At the end of a surreal weekend, news of the last mystery aircraft being shot down emerged on Sunday night. It was the third unidentified flying object blown out of the skin out of the sky in three days, and a week after a balloon equipped with antennae traversed the U.S. before it too was blasted to bits. The huge intelligence apparatus of the world's biggest superpower is now trying to make sense of it all. The three mystery aircraft shot down in the last few days are very different in size and shape to the large and shape to the large balloon. This was described as cylindrical in shape and first spotted over Canada's Yukon territory on Friday evening. It was shot down on Saturday. New Zealand has declared a state of emergency due to Cyclone Gabrielle, the third such alert in its history. The Minister for Emergency Management, Kieran McAnulty, signed the national declaration into place Tuesday morning. It will apply to the Northland, Auckland, Tairawhiti, Bay of Plenty, Waikato and Hawke's Bay regions and streamline the government's response to the disaster. At least 38,000 homes were without power on Tuesday morning. In New Zealand's largest city, Auckland, authorities earlier evacuated people from 50 homes around a 30 meters high tower that was in danger of collapse, local media reported. reported. Dozens of evacuation centers have also been set up in the city. Mr. McAnulty described the storm as an unprecedented weather event. His children have been crying, 
they miss him, said a member of Ismail Mashal's family. They keep going to the gate and asking why he's not coming home. Professor Mashal, a university lecturer and outspoken campaigner for women's education in Afghanistan, was arrested by the Taliban government on the 2nd of February. In of February. More than 10 days later, his family has no information on his whereabouts. We have not had any contact with him since he was taken. We have been knocking on every door of the administration that we can to get some information about him and find out what condition he's in. But no one says anything. Professor Mashal was taken into custody when he was distributing free books in the Debori area of Kabul, near the Higher Education Ministry. Syria's government has agreed to open two more border crossings to allow aid into the country devastated by last week's deadly earthquake, the UN says. It's going to make a big difference. The quake in neighboring Turkey is known to have killed almost 40,000 people in the two countries. Many Syrians have been angry over the lack of, the lack of aid to their war-torn nation. The government of President Bashar al-Assad has blamed difficulties in rescue efforts on the impact of Western sanctions imposed on the country. But international aid groups say the key impediments are the Assad government's mismanagement and refusal to engage with all areas of the country. Akansha could feel anxiety well up inside her as she sat opposite her date. So the 26-year-old began fidgeting with the cutlery on the table and avoiding eye contact. But then her date leaned in and told her that it was okay to be anxious, and that she could steady herself and appear less nervous by clasping her hands under the table and taking a deep breath. The person opposite her wasn't a real date, but a dating surrogate, someone hired to go on mock dates with her, observe her behavior, and share tips and insights in real time to help her deal with anything preventing her from enjoying herself. Eight Afghan journalists who worked for could be evacuated to the UK after a judge ordered ministers to reconsider their plight. The group has spent more than a year in hiding in Afghanistan after they were left behind during the August 2021 British withdrawal. Ministers had rejected their cases a year after receiving the applications. The applications. One of the group said on Monday that the Taliban believed he was a spy and had already tried to shoot him. All eight of the journalists had worked for many years in Afghanistan. 
Some of them had also worked more directly with the British government on projects including democracy and media training. But as the Taliban increasingly took over, they and their families became the target of threats. Lloyd Devereux Richards, a full-time attorney and father of three, spent 14 years pursuing his dream of writing a book, and the next 11 years hoping for the thriller to take off. It did not, until last week when his daughter posted a 16-second TikTok video with a simple message, I'd love for him to get some sales. The book jumped to number one on Amazon's serial killer thrillers list. The viral video which details Mr. Richard's long journey to finishing the novel, Stone Maidens, has garnered more than 40 million views. TikTok, a short-form video hosting platform, has helped fuel sales of hundreds of books in recent years, including through the hashtag. An eight-year-old Australian boy has died from suspected electrocution while on holiday in Fiji. The boy, identified by family as Cairo Winatana from Sydney, was staying with his parents at the club Wyndham Denarau Island Resort on the west coast of Fiji Main Island. Fiji police said he was found lying motionless, lying motionless near a flower garden at the hotel last Thursday. He was taken to hospital in the nearby city of Nadi, but could not be revived. Initial information gathered is that the child was allegedly electrocuted however the post-mortem will have to confirm. The boy was a New Zealand citizen but resident of Australia, they added. New Zealand's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade is providing assistance to the family, a spokeswoman said. Some 46,000 homes have lost power as Cyclone Gabrielle lashes the north of New Zealand. Authorities have issued warnings of heavy rain and winds, and hundreds of flights have been cancelled. Some areas have declared a state of emergency, as Gabrielle nears the North Island. It comes weeks after Auckland and Sting areas were hit by record rainfall that sparked floods and killed four people. Extreme weather event has come on the back of extreme weather event said New Zealand Prime Minister Chris Hipkins, who announced 11.5 million New Zealand dollars, 6 million pounds, 7.3 million United States dollars, aid package. Things are likely to get worse before they get better.
Emergency Management Minister Kieran McAnulty told a media briefing on Monday that the government is considering declaring a national state of emergency for only the third time in the country's history. U.S. military officials say they are unsure how three unidentified flying objects shot out of the skies of North America had been able to stay aloft. President Joe Biden ordered another object, the fourth in total this month, to be downed on Sunday. As it was traveling at 20,000 feet, 6,100 meters, it, meters, it could have interfered with commercial air traffic, the U.S. said. A military commander said it could be a gaseous type of balloon, or some type of a propulsion system. He added he could not rule out that the objects were extraterrestrials. The latest object, shot down near the Canadian border, described by defense officials as an unmanned octagonal structure, with strings attached to it. The Philippines has accused China of shining a military-grade laser light to scuttle a resupply mission to a disputed shoal in the South China Sea. The laser glare temporarily blinded the crew of the Filipino Coast Guard boat, forcing it to retreat. The vessel was headed to a marooned Navy vessel that Manila has used for years to claim the second Thomas Shoal. China has in the past used water cannon and sirens to enforce its claim to much of the South China Sea. The incident, on the 6th of January, was only reported publicly on Monday. It was a clear violation of Philippine sovereign rights, in waters that Manila refers to as the West Philippine Sea, the Filipino Coast Guard said in a statement. Cambodia's leader Hun Sen has shut down one of the country's last independent media outlets, just months before the country's election. VOD, or The Voice of Democracy, had published a story last week that hurt his government's reputation, Hun Sen said in a Facebook post on Sunday. He has refused to accept the group's apology, cancelling its license on Monday. Advocates say VOD's loss is a major blow to the nation's limited press. Editors at the news organization confirmed to the BBC that police had arrived at their Phnom Penh office on Monday morning with an order revoking their operating license. Access to, to past stories on VOD's Khmer and English sites has also been blocked by some internet service providers, staff confirmed.
Last year a woman in India's northern state of Bihar was told her daughter's rapist had died and the case against him closed. She questioned the claim and uncovered the truth, leading to the reopening of the case and ultimately securing justice for her daughter. Sutik Biswas investigates a remarkable tale of perseverance. On a, on a balmy morning possibly in February last year, two men arrived at a cremation ground on the banks of the Ganges, India's holiest river. They were there to perform a Hindu funeral rite. The men were lugging firewood, but were strangely not carrying a corpse. Once they reached the cremation ground, things are turn. The men built a pyre on the ground. Then, one of them laid himself down on the pyre, covered himself with a white shroud and closed his eyes. The other piled more wood on until only the first man's head was visible outside the cage of sticks. Another unidentified object has been shot down over North American airspace, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has confirmed. He said the latest object violated Canadian airspace and was shot down over Yukon in northwest Canada. Both Canadian and U.S. aircraft were scrambled to track down the object which Mr. Trudeau says was taken out by a U.S. F-22 fighter jet. It is the third object to be shot down over North America in the last week. The American military destroyed a Chinese balloon last weekend, and on Friday an unspecified object the size of a small car was shot down off Alaska. Mr. Trudeau, Trudeau confirmed on Saturday he gave the order and had spoken with U.S. President Joe Biden. Canadian forces will now recover and analyze the wreckage of the object, he wrote on Twitter. The latest unspecified object was flying over central Yukon at about 40,000 feet, 12,000 meters, and intercepted at about 15, about 1541 local time on Saturday, Defense Minister Anita Anand told reporters. Merv. Iram. Merv. Iram. Rescue worker Mustafa Ozturk is shouting. Everyone around us has been ordered to be silent. The team are looking for two sisters who other survivors say are trapped alive under piles of rubble. With sensitive devices they listen for any response. A response. Everyone is frozen in anticipation. And then, a breakthrough. Iram. My dear. I am close to you. You hear me? Yes? Mustafa says. Those of us watching can't hear it, but it is clear now that she is responding. A small group of the girls silently with us. You are superb. Now you stay calm and answer me. Ah, okay, that's Merv. Merv, dear. Just answer my questions, he says. Merv, 24, and her sister Iram, 19 were trapped under the rubble of their five-story apartment block in Antakya, southern, southern Turkey, which was flattened by the earthquake. It had been two days, but for them those days felt like weeks.
Unrest in southern Turkey has disrupted rescue efforts following Monday's deadly earthquake, three rescue groups have said. The death toll in Turkey and Syria from the quake has surpassed 28,000, and hope of finding many more survivors is fading despite some miraculous rescues. German rescuers and the Austrian army paused, paused search operations on Saturday, citing clashes between unnamed groups. Security is expected to worsen as food supplies dwindle, one rescuer said. And nearly 50 people have been arrested for looting, with several guns seized, local media reported. Turkey's president said he would use emergency power to punish anyone breaking the law. An Austrian army spokesperson said early on Saturday that clashes between unidentified groups in the Hatay province had left dozens of personnel from the Austrian forces' disaster relief unit seeking shelter in a base camp with other international organizations. More than 5,000 pregnant Russian women have entered Argentina in recent months, including 33 on a single flight on Thursday, officials say. The latest arrivals were all in the final weeks of pregnancy, according to the National Migration Agency. It is believed the women want to make sure their babies are born in Argentina to obtain, Tina to obtain Argentinian citizenship. The number of arrivals has increased recently, which local media suggests is a result of the war in Ukraine. Of the 33 women who arrived in the Argentinian capital on one flight on Thursday, three were detained because of problems with their documentation, joining three more who arrived the previous day, migration agency head Florencia Carignano told La Nación. Thousands of people in New Zealand have been left without power as parts of the country endure the start of a severe storm. Gabrielle buffeted Australia's Norfolk Island overnight and has been downgraded from a cyclone. Forecasters have issued red, heavy wind and rain warnings for Auckland and Northland with 200 mm of rain and winds of, and winds of up to 130 km per hour, 80 miles per hour, expected. Evacuation centers have been set up and residents have been preparing. They have been told to ensure they have enough supplies to last three days in case they are trapped at home. Tens of thousands of sandbags have been distributed there due to concerns the sodden ground and ground and weakened infrastructure have made homes more vulnerable to flooding.
One of Ukraine's closest allies has cast doubt on whether it would be able to supply President Volodymyr Zelensky with the fighter jets he says are needed to win the war with Russia. Poland's president, Andrzej Duda, speaking exclusively to Sunday with Laura Kunzberg, said sending F-16 aircraft would be a very serious decision that was decision that was not easy to take. Poland has been one of Ukraine's most vocal supporters since Russia invaded. Last month, it was one of several countries to pledge to send more tanks, ammunition and equipment to the front line. President Duda's comments come despite him and President Zelensky having spoken this week, at the end of the Ukrainian leader's surprise headline-grabbing European tour. In London, President Zelensky used his speech in Parliament to call for the means to help fight Russia in the air.